Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly uh, scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. We call it to order at 6.35. We were waiting to finish our discussion about snow and slush and water. So while it's freezing out there tonight, be careful. Just be careful. There's ice under some of that standing water. Uh, we're also reminded tonight that it is not rabbit season. It is not duck season. It's budget season. So we're going to talk to, I told my wife I was going to work that in somehow, um, that uh, we're going to talk tonight with uh, George from the highway department. Uh, we are going to talk a little later with the fire department. The chief is in, although I saw big red trucks running around, so maybe the chief will be late, but we'll see. A uh, couple of updates from us, and uh, that'll do it, I guess. We're here with the Finance Committee for, again, this process, I think, in the last handful of years has been uh, streamlined. We get all the information at the same time, do our deliberations separately, come back together and, you know, see what we can do about putting a budget together. Uh, comments from the board before we start with George? No. Good. Been come? Anything you want to weigh in on? <clears throat> Just Red Sox trades, anything like that? Nothing? Okay. All right, George. Um, Let's talk highway budget. Budget. So I made a few changes on the on the budget. Uh, highway garage line item with the garage energy that stays the same. Um, it's a lot. I haven't heard that electricity or any of that it has been bumped up because mm -hmm. that mostly comes from you guys and stuff right. like that. So um, tree warden, I added a extra sixteen hundred dollars. That's basically one day rental on a truck. Okay chipper, a bucket truck, and a guy come in, gives me an extra day. Mm -hmm. uh, so we could do a little bit more tree work in, in this upcoming fiscal year. That's needed. <clears throat> yeah, South Main Street, you know, there's a bunch of dying mm -hmm. trees that need to be pruned out still, and some taken down and replaced. Uh, so that helps us a little bit with, in that aspect, because the price of tree work is starting to go through the roof. And, they're all busy. Yeah, and it's crazy. So, um, highway super wages. On the personnel committee, we've been working on that wage survey study and longevity and stuff like that. This increase will basically put me halfway up the longevity part. Um, so I took took the difference between the top and where I am now mm -hmm. and divided it in half because we're trying to do it in a three-step type process. Um, that'll be coming out hopefully soon when we finish up with a personnel committee and stuff like that. Um, so that's why that increases in there. That's plus a, I put in a two and a half percent coal because when I did my budget, we were kicking around the two to two and a half percent because that was what the average was seeming to be. So that's what I put in there. So it's probably more leaning towards more of a 2%, I think, but we're not sure at the moment. That. Secretary wages, that went up that much money with a 2.5 coal I put in there. So most all of my colas I put in were 2.5 <coughs> on, on the high side. So if they go to 2%, two two it would be dropped down to a little bit less. Um, same with my highway laborer, uh, my senior guy. There's a he's been here two years, so we calculated. I calculated uh, a ten year spread, and we multiplied or we, I divided that by the two years and, and got an extra dollar ten on that. So I added dollar ten plus the cola. Um, because we are, we are working on the, uh, the on the wage, yeah. yeah, on the wage study. So we're working on that, like a ten year plan for for people uh, per se uh, it's not really we're not calling it a step raise but we're using it as a guide point i guess you want to call it to keep people in line where they should be over the years um, seasonal wages i'm asking for an extra thousand uh, dollars seasonal help helps us paint lines paint the teardrops trim brush with us uh, do all kinds of different summer stuff, weed whack guardrails and stuff like that, and that'll just give me a few extra hours uh, for the, the summer kids that we hire. Um, I should have figured out how many hours a week that should have been, but I didn't have a chance to do that. 
so, which is a thousand dollars is probably not that many hours between the two kids. So. <laughs> <clears throat> I we labor over time. I kept that the same because summertime we don't usually get much overtime. We might get a storm here or a paving on a Friday or or something like that or work a few hours extra. Right. So I just bumped that up a little bit to keep up with the salary increases and stuff like that. Um, most of the overtime comes in the winter, as you guys know. Highway department expenses. I I bumped that up for. 5,000 over the three line items that are in there, which is machinery and fuel expense. Um, some of it's for increased cost in fuel, diesel, gas, repairs, stuff like that. Uh, parts, filters, you name it. Anything for the trucks and buildings and, and uh, work around the town added into that. That's where we bumped that up, 5,000. Snow and ice wages. You know, as we've talked in the past, I haven't I haven't bumped that up until you guys we talk about it, and generally you guys like to keep that a little bit lower in case we you know we do have to deficit spend or whatever. But that's about it, really. A couple of years ago, George, we raised both snow and ice wages and snow and ice expense, basically deflationary trying to, so, we, right. so it looks like the DOR that we're not just holding a line flat and deficit spending. Right. Is there value in looking at this again this year? It's, yeah. a, it's a warm year. We're going to talk later about snow and ice deficit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could possibly bump it up. That, that ends up being an audit red flag on occasion. Right. Yeah, yeah. if you guys are willing to bump it up, we'll, we'll, we can bump it up. Okay. Exactly. How's Questions? salt been? Has it, has it gone up a lot? Salt prices right now are, are not too bad. Yeah. Just got three loads in today because we were pretty low. Right, right. right. It's, it's doing good. Finance committee questions? What do you think? I think it's all pretty reasonable, especially uh, your salary. I know you've been working with personnel committee for quite some time, and I yeah, think yeah, we've been working pretty hard on on the, all the salary adjustments in the last couple of years and stuff. So it's reasonable, to say the least. Okay. Tom, David, on the expense side. Um, <clears throat> that, that sticks out really, you know. The, Jeff, anything you want to tear up, just shred? <laughs> no. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. It's early. It's early. <laughs> okay. <laughs> want to talk a little bit about uh, capital at this point? Sure. Sure. So we got a, you actually got a January 2nd letter in here with an uh, update from MassDOT on what our CHEP 90 is. Yeah. I didn't see that one yet. This is January 2nd, 2020, that we're we went to the town administrator, sorry. And she's not here anymore. So this one here says we are getting for fiscal year 2020. So that would have been this year. Yeah. Yep. January 7th, 2020. We got fiscal about, year. Yeah, we got more money. More money by like less than 20 grand, but still. This what is we got? Huh? And we got an extra. It's two hundred thousand three seventy-seven, and then right. yeah, I can give it to you if you want to look at it. Too. It's eight, an extra eighteen thousand two sixteen, like in supplemental. Nice. <coughs> eighteen two eighteen. You said. Yeah. Eighteen two eighteen. Two sixteen. Two sixteen. Uh, well, there's yeah. eighteen two sixteen in like one addition. Like they, they, they had they had there was extra money that they put into uh, chapter ninety two. Right. Nice. Yeah. That makes it sense. never hurts. Yeah. No, for sure. <clears throat> Did you want the number, Elliot? Eighteen two eighteen, 18 two sixteen was the six. extra, yep. and then the, the so regular right. chapter ninety was two hundred thousand three seventy seven. Two hundred three seventy seven. Yeah. yeah. Kind of an odd number, but 
It's always an odd number. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you're gonna do you're gonna pave a hundred more feet, George. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. If that. Yeah. Get exactly one more uh, surface water basin. All right. right. Or two, maybe. No. You're getting, <clears throat> you're getting good prices on those. Catch basin repair. Yeah, they're about three hundred and seventy-five dollars a basin. If they do them. That's a pretty good price. Yeah. Material and labor, right? Yep. Not bad, George. For a certain depth, and then if it goes beyond that, then yeah. it's a little extra. It's they can do 25 basins in a day compared to three for us, maybe. Right, yeah. right, know, right. So it's well worth great way to do well it. Well worth them doing it. Yeah. So George, one, one of the things the uh, FERCOG is doing is they're doing catch basins. They're, they're documenting it all. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean uh, culverts and such. Culverts, right. Mm -hmm. How many culverts do you think we have in the town? 30? Not even, right? Yeah, it's probably under that. That's what I thought. Because it may be a long time before they get there, but I was just wondering, they're putting it on their, they, they, they'll put it on the GIS map. Mm -hmm. So I was just wondering if we took the pictures and identified where it was, they, their GIS people, could, instead of having to come out here, they could put it, all that information together, mm -hmm. and it'd be great on the on the map. I know, I know, Freddie was is going to Fred uh, the water, yep, water nice. he's yep. going to be doing some some GIS, GRS stuff for, with um, I think Mass Waterworks, Mass Waterworks. Yeah, that makes and, sense. And yeah, um, I was I know the guy that's doing it, and he was talking to me about it. Maybe talking to Fred, we can do <clears> both. <throat> Our stuff at the same time, or something like that. Well, I was just wondering if if we if 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 because they've done like they did Irving, and Irving mm. has let's say a thousand culverts. There's a lot of culverts there, mm -hmm. and when you go and then when, and they they only did like four towns so far or less. So I was just wondering if we could get all that information. If we get that information, yeah. they could plot it and all that kind of stuff. Right. So I was wondering, maybe we want to touch base with them, and they look at condition. Yeah. Right. We're what definitely you want. planning on talking to them, yeah, because then you can put that in a database. And, and you get in the database for us. Yep. And so I mean, mm -hmm. if if we're gonna go out, we go out anyways and look at cleaning them because we want to make sure that they flow. Right. Then you can do a schedule and everything. It makes right. it a lot easier managing. Plus, if you use it like your phone, it should have the metadata from. When you took where you took it, so you should have all the coordinate, the GPS coordinates right in the picture. Oh, I, I know there's some kind of program out there. So if you do take a picture, because I know the tree guys have it, they'll yes. take a picture of the tree and it gives them the coordinates of the tree and stuff. So yeah. I just have to figure out what app that is, and I can I can use that. Or let me let me talk to them, and I'll see if I can get somebody to talk to you. But I, I was think, I was thinking after I left the meeting that be we sh we should do that. Yeah, it's a great we idea. don't. I don't think we. Ha I mean. I'm still learning where some of the culverts are. I mean, there's right. like Brown Cross. We had that sinkhole this summer. Right. Didn't even know that where the pipe went. I still don't know where the pipe went. Right. Where it goes. Nobody knows where it starts. So there's a pipe in the ground, but nobody knows where it starts. Huh. And I tried to put a camera up it, and I only get so far up it because it changes from 15-inch uh, plastic, corrugated plastic, to a 18-inch corrugated steel, back to plastic back to steel and then the little remote gets stuck and it can't go any farther. How far does it go? Um, I went up a hundred and something feet and I st we can't get any farther. Yeah, if you, it's all tough, it's tough to push over a hundred feet. Yeah. Especially on big stuff. I mean that's that's with the guy with the remote control oh, yeah? buggy that did it and it cost me about 800 bucks to do it and we was didn't that, get was much Was that uh, Charlie Brown? Charlie Brown, yeah. Where's his culvert, George? It's on Brown Cross. It <clears> comes out into the brook but we fixed uh, 65 feet of it last yeah. year because it they use single wall corrugated mm -hmm. pipe which is very weak sure. and it collapsed the whole top of it so we kind of fixed some of the real bad stuff and stopped <laughs> before it got too bad no charlie's very good he, yeah he's about one of the better better yeah. people out and there and he was having we first we found a beaver's nest up there <laughs> with a beaver on picture so we had to scoot him out of there and then flush it out so i had monica come in with her with their truck and uh, jet it out and get all the sticks and stuff out of it, and then we were able to get up to where it changed different sizes, and that's as far as we could well, go. They, they have Montague has a jet vac truck. They do have a vac truck. Yeah, he charges okay. he charges us a few bucks an hour to come out. 
so they'll they'll rent their truck out, but they have their guys come out and do it. And yeah, yeah. So it's sometimes it's worth it for a quick job. Cause sometimes you can't get you know any of the other ones that are under contract with us uh -huh, to right. come out. So yeah. if you got that thing, I'll write down the app for you because I can show you. Like I get it on my phone, yeah. and like you go into like the library, and then pull it up, and it'll pull up tons of information including latitude longitude and everything so because yep. it basically just goes and grabs all the stuff that your phone's taking anyway that you don't necessarily get to see right so so was so they came and they, they did they put the jet rod up through there yeah they put their their jet rod up through there and only get up a certain way a certain amount and then we tried we filled up their truck again tried it again we got more sticks and debris out of it yeah but there's not a there's never a really a lot of water running out of it, so I have no idea where it's coming from. And then they built I thought it was across the street where they built that new house at the end of Brown Cross. Yeah. It's not. So I have and then I asked a couple of guys that used to work in the town back when Charlie Hepburn was here. He's like, I think I remember doing some work over here, but I don't know where it is, he said. So it's I have no idea. Until it really has a problem, then we'll have to figure it out. But so there's a few of those around. I'm still one trying one to figure those out. nice mysteries. But yeah. but it would be I, I but if we I'll see if I can get that information, the information they need. But I would think that we should be able, you know, I would think that we could inventory them and give them the information so that we because I don't think they'd get to us for another forty years. Or right. Well, and that's one of the things. Yeah, that there's so many towns that we were talking about in um, the ditch committee thing. Yeah. Because that's an easy thing to to do is to you know take care of that stuff. It'd right. be a long time. Yeah. <clears throat> Talk about capital, George. Yep. So one of the capital requests I'm asking for is a little milling head. It's a 12-inch head that goes on of our, uh, our whacker that we have, so we can repair some of these potholes or bad areas in the, in the blacktop. We can go and mill yeah. and section out, and it'll be a, a, a better repair than just throwing material oh, in the hole that's there now with jagged edges. That so you think it put, so you go back with a hot pack. Go back with a hot pack and patch it. Yep. Yeah. So you mill it out, clean it, tack it, That's put good. your patch in there, and it does a much better job than just kind of sweeping a hole out and putting Throwing the material in. back in the hole. It does a nice clean cut. So at capital planning last month, the question about the milling head size was, is a 12 inch standard size? Is There's it? 12 and 18. Yeah. 18. It doesn't seem like a big bite. What, that was the reason. The reason. That, that the reason for it is the machine, the, the size machine that we have. Yeah. With the size milling head, if you go too big on the milling head, it heats the machine up too much. If you uh -huh. use it too long, so it doesn't have the cooling capacity. So if you get a little smaller head, yep. you can use it a little bit longer. It might take you a little bit longer, but um, I priced out the, the the 12 inch, but there is an 18 inch head that will fit that machine. They said. So you can go either way. Do you have a hot box? We have a hot box. You do have a hot box? Yep, we got that last year. And it's fantastic. Good. What's the, the general life? If, you, if you're getting like the 12 inch, what do you do Oh, that thing could last you. For, for what you do with it, um, it could last you years. As long as you take care of it and the teeth and stuff like that. I mean, it's pretty, pretty simple. All the teeth are re replaceable. And it's just a drum, a drum head with a bunch of teeth on it that grind it. Swap them out. So what would this offset from a contracted service or an improvement in the uh, of my capital meeting is tomorrow? So I want to have the answer. <laughs> what does it offset? offset? Right. It, it just helps us. It'll save us a little bit of money in patching. I think we can do more of a permanent patch than a temporary patch. Revisiting, revisiting. Yeah. Right? So it'll save us some time and time and material. Um, we could do. You know, you know, if we're doing some shimming or something, we could potentially mill our own keyways and stuff like that. And if it makes the repairs last longer. Sure. Yeah. Again, those are the lines of questions that came up last last month. So yeah, I'm, yeah, sure gonna, I'm sure they're going to be back. Great. Thank you. And then the next one is just a single axle dump truck. I, ran, I mean, I put a budgetary price there. I didn't get any information because it's not anything that we're going to do this year. It's I just put it on the schedule so that, you, that you would see that it's going to be coming up. I think yeah. we got two more years on the lease of the truck we have now. That would make sense, yeah. Um, so hopefully when that lease is up, we have another old truck that's causing us some issues 
we're going to be looking at roll right into another lease. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it makes sense doing the five year lease. It, it's worked out pretty good so far. And it's not a lot of money per year. So <coughs> instead of trying to hammer down a hole. How did the lease with uh, either repairs or warranty work out versus the purchase? I mean, there was an active discussion about leasing versus buying last time. Well, well, we leased the purchase it. I mean, it's we leased own. I understand. At least own, right? Yeah. It, it, um, I mean, it's the same. I mean, if you, it's the same as as buying it out, right? You still have the same amount of warranty unless you buy the extended. Got it. Um, stuff like that. So there's no trap with it. No, no. Thank you. Do you have a loader in 2025. It's in there somewhere. FY25. Yep. Yeah, loader 2025. I mean, our loader's a 2000, what's it, 2000, 2001. Um, it's got about 7,000 hours on it now. Plus, we replaced that tranny about six years ago, I think it was. Yeah, I remember that. Um, still, still running decent. Uh, losing a little bit of power here and there, but it's, it's still running pretty good. Well, we maintain it every every year, service it, grease it weekly, monthly. It's winter time. We do it every couple weeks just to get, you know, because it's out in the weather. So right. getting the water out of everything. Um, so so that's just on the on the agenda to keep keep in mind that we probably will need one eventually. Then we got a two co two post car lift. Uh, this lift is a. 15,000 pound lift, so we'll be able to put our pickup, our one ton, uh, and any other light, lighter vehicle on it to do service, brake jobs, um, get the car up off the ground so we're not working under it, under our jack stands and jack on our backs. Uh, it's a little safer to have it on a lift than being underneath it and a jack and jack stands all the time. How, uh, how many other highway departments do you know have gotten lifts in their garages? Let's see, Deerfield's got two. Uh, they got a big truck and a small post. Um, town of Greenfield's got a couple. Town of Amherst has one. Uh, East Hampton, South Hampton. I think <coughs> Palom, I think, has one, if I remember right. So we're going to get one down there, has one. Some towns do, not all towns. You know, they they service vehicles like we do on the, on the ground. So what do you guys do now? We jack them up, put jack stands under them, and service them on a creeper. It's not ideal. Yeah. So it's a safer. A little bit safer, yeah, for sure. <clears throat> we had talked, we talked before in the past about possibly liability you know, <laughs> service other town vehicles as well, right? No, not as part of my discussion. My area of concern has always been a liability associated with having a, essentially a mechanic shop with a lift. We still haven't got an answer yet. So I, I, I know you guys. I, I know you guys have a question on the liability part of it. I didn't know if you heard back or not. So because I haven't heard anything. Jeff's going to find out. Wait, he's going to find out. And the last one's uh, a mower. This one, I, I bumped the price up a little bit because I know we talked about possibly doing more mowing, right? Yeah, more mowing and, and possibly another employee eventually <clears throat> to help with you know maintenance of the other buildings and, yeah. and stuff like that. So mowing would be involved in that maintenance of this building, maintenance of the other two buildings. Um, How much our contract now, Scott, for mowing? Broken into three different pieces, but it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's getting up there near thirty thousand dollars. They yeah. put all the pieces together. So between seasonals and oh, general, general mowing, and now you've got the additional work that's been requested by the ball field ball folks, field. and yeah. it, it just well, I, I, we always hear in the springtime, in particular, uh, right. about not mowed enough, and uh, that's to, yeah, okay. Plus our, our holder that we have, that old 
85 holder, it's pretty much toast. I think the clutch went in it again. Um, surplus? So, huh? Surplus? It will be soon, yep. Yeah. And so now we have no mower to mow the property that we mow out back for the highway department, so. Is, we it have to figure that, out something. is it something that's an attachment that Newsom has, the Wacker has? It's an attachment. It, um, actually, I, I tried to see if I could find one for the Wacker. Yep. Uh, and I haven't had any luck yet. They say they make them, but I haven't found one yet. It seems a bit of overkill for mowing lawn, but I hear it's you. a little heavy <laughs> for being out there. So um, <laughs> we might run it up more than right, more than it's actually worth mow it. So which I'm trying to figure figure something out to to get that mowed if we attach it to the other mowing or if we find something at least we can mow it for for now. Um, you know the new thing is not to mow, right? <laughs> I, I was I was on a, I was on an interviewing committee for, and and the guy was from Bucknell. He ended up getting a job, but okay. they're going they they were whole areas. They don't even mow them anymore. Just they they don't them. mow, that's and and that's one of the things is that when parents and would come on campus, they say, well, it doesn't look good, and and he says, yeah, but yeah, but right. and but, they talk right. about natural landscaping and yep. not mowing and, yep. and when you explain it so they put signs signs up around it now people go oh that's interesting right but at the Whitley Whitley car park we have no mow signs right on the north side of that five and ten yeah take, take a look right there and that whole swale from a purely practical perspective water retention right mm -hmm. it's a whole lot more robust so anyway I hear you I've read about it as well it's interesting yeah so we do need some kind of a mowing, mowing yeah. machine, whether whether it be goats, big enough goats, to do goats, right? George, goats, uh, goats, goats. Yeah, Thomas Thomas goats. We could rent some goats. Yeah, there you Thomas go. Is goats. Thomas is goats. <laughs> yeah. Love it. I think that's the last one, right? Yeah. yeah I think so, George. Thomas is goats. That's where you took that Christmas tree. So we have homework to do with respect to the lift, George. Again, not necessarily completely opposed to it, but there's questions there. A, oh, that yeah. garage doesn't have a lot of headroom, and B. No, I'd, uh, I'd have to put it in two. I've thought about two certain areas, and yeah. that's about it. Yeah. I mean, we can't put it out in the middle of the bays because right. then we can't get the trucks in, right. in and out. So, right. um, does it impact your general? Floor? Obviously, it impacts the general floor plan by space. Does it change the use for that whole area? I don't think so. That's where you're going to park the mower. Well, I, could, yeah. well, I thought about putting it where that front bay door is, right between the, it'll fit right between where the openers are. Yep. So we'll have enough height there, and I think I can just continue parking that hot box right underneath it so we're not using it. So yep. it'll be more out of the way. Somehow in that space, you got to work the Tetris magic a little bit. Yeah. Squeeze things in, and yeah. it's just got to fit. Any other questions with respect to highway, both capital or expense? Again, it's our first blush yeah. at it. I'm sure questions will come up. Yeah. Good. Uh, it's gonna be, what do you think? Mowers, trucks, lifts, late wages. So you're looking for both mowers, the 72 and the 52? If we're gonna take over the mowing, if not, we can get away with a 52. All right. Which mower would you use to do the tree belt? That's all, maybe the 52 or the 72? The tree belt, I mean. None. Yeah. <laughs> it was a good try. I mean, if, if we took over like the school in here, you'd <clears throat> definitely need a bigger mower, especially if you only yeah. have one person mowing it. Otherwise, you'd be mowing the thing for three days. Right. You know, it's just... It's By the time you're done, not, it'd be time to go back and start it. Yeah, again. it just wouldn't be feasible. I mean... So, George, give us a proposal what it would cost. Equipment, man. Okay. Okay. Take over all the mowing. Yeah, take over Maintenance, all the mowing. mowing. Trailer. Okay. Mowers. Okay. So that we can so we can make a, a fair comparison. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks, George. I appreciate you taking hey, the time. Thank on you. That was enough, guys. But also, also don't forget the maintenance on that mower because I know there's a lot of maintenance on mowers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, First sharp blades blade and blah blah blah. Blades are pretty easy though. Those don't okay. take much time, especially in the winter time. Get all the time in the world to sharpen blades. <laughs> this winter. Yeah. <laughs> All right, George. Thank you. <clears throat>
Chief, we're only five up. minutes late. <laughs> we did okay. You yeah. think about that? We did okay. Huh? Okay, it's that time of year. It is that time of year. Nice. How are you doing hey, today, Chief? Chief? Good. How's everybody? All right. Good. Francis has got his eraser off. Watch out, Chief. That's well, I, <coughs> I, I actually don't have in front of me is your operating request. Good free this year, Scott. <laughs> Fee for service, just like the old days. In exchange for looking at it, yeah, just right. give me 20% across the yeah. yeah, I, I think we can move on to capital. There you go. <laughs> okay. I don't have it either. Okay. Do not own them. That's right. the numbers for... I don't have the hard copy of the operating side, Chief. So, I think we have, is it like two sides? What's the magic number? One, two, two, five, five, one, five. I can go make some copies. I can make a copy of mine. It's got some crib notes on there. Uh oh. That's okay. It's nothing you don't have. It just consolidates it all. Yeah. Let me do that. Yeah, if you don't mind, that'd be great, Jeff. I appreciate it. Maybe like six, seven <clears throat> copies, regardless. You want to jump right to capital, Chief? And maybe, maybe uh, also we could talk in the interim while we wait for copies to come up. Surplus equipment request for the fire hoses. Mm -hmm. We saw some email exchanges about declaring some hoses surplus, either donating donating them to uh, the Firemen's Association for disposition or to a, a, a private third party. Correct. What uh, what I had requested was if I could get a quantity of hose. What happened was about five, six years ago, we had some budget money left. So Bobby decided to get new fire hose for one of the trucks, which is coincidentally the truck we're replacing. So the hose is in great shape, put it right on the new truck. Um, the hose we took off on the other hand was old sure. and wouldn't pass a pressure test. So essentially it's not suitable for fire use anymore. I wouldn't sell it to anybody or transfer ownership under the guise that it can be used for anything pressure related. Got it. Discharge for a sump pump is about all that I would say, or if you wanted to cut it up and use it for some other non-fluid handling task, that would work. Um, we've got an association meeting this weekend yep. coming up, so I'd be more than happy to table that to the, uh, the powers to be yep. and ask them if they'd be willing to accept the hose and then dispose of it. The value is pretty low. Um, I think recall I mentioned like 15 bucks a length and essentially that's the, the scrap value of the magnesium sure. on the uh, on the ends yes, right. and mm -hmm. some intrinsic value for the canvas and rubber. Right. But that aside from that, there isn't much and I wouldn't be getting rid of more than maybe five lengths right now. To be honest with you, we don't have an inventory. We just know what's on top of the pile. Right. So we've probably got 20 or 30 lengths and I wouldn't be, thank you, I wouldn't be comfortable giving you a hard count until I actually do that. But if you're comfortable having 10 lengths go to the Firemen's Association, then I'll ask them if they can accept Thanks it and dispose of it. That would be a very generous offer and a gift I think they'd thank you. take us up on. So is it in, in, the, in that discussion, we're not coming back to purchase. This is excess. I'm sorry, this we know that won't necessarily pass the hydrostatic. I get that part. But does it mean to purchase some more hoses? No. Okay. No. Eventually we'll need some. It's yeah, not, it's a cycle to them. Yeah, it's not in the near term. Right. But everything that we have now is pretty good. And quite frankly, they were hose that was taken off. And the intention was, well, we'll surplus it. We'll surplus it. Previous guy said, I'll leave it to the next guy. Right. So the next guy is, is it, right? right? Nice. Questions to the board? No. Not that. Seems like a win win right along. Nope. Is there a move to declare surplus hoses based on the cheese recommendation? Uh, motion. Oh. Oh. Motion second. and second. All those in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. Okay, Chief, go ahead and surplus them. Thank you. Okay. Jeff, thanks for running on and getting us something we can actually look at. Versus that awesome look, we're like, we're at what page? Okay. Fire away, G. Let's talk about the expense side. Okay. As far as wages go for myself and part time fire clerk, no changes being requested. 
uh, on the call firefighter wage side, I've asked for a fairly substantial <clears throat> increase. However, that figure really embodies what I've asked for and needed in terms of reserve fund transfers. And um, we've had a, you know, I'll knock on wood here, we've had a pretty nice two-week <clears throat> run where we haven't had much activity, and then all of a sudden today we've had two calls. So <clears throat> the honeymoon might be over. Uh, ultimately, <laughs> Uh, we're not necessarily increasing the number of people that we have on the roster. In fact, it's gone down by one or two. Um, the firefighters attending the fire academy yep. and the wa training wages for them hasn't really impacted things year to date. Uh, granted, we've st still got a couple of months left before we're seeing the end of the fiscal year, but that did not impact us that badly. Fortunately, we've had, again, a relatively quiet winter and we're kind of right where we were last year. And looking back, this is about the same time I did a reserve fund request. Right. So um, understanding 40% is a pretty big increase, but it's not money that we haven't spent before. And it would be more of eliminating a uh, administrative exercise to that degree. Not gonna change the way that we pay folks or the method by which we measure time not adding any head count, it's a matter of just count right. based on some historical. That's right. right. That's right. Probably not going to see, regrettably, the uh, number of calls or the length of time we spend on them going down appreciably, aggregate when you look at it. Okay. Um, further down the line here, fire department expenses put a small increase in just because over the last couple of years we've noticed. The stuff that we usually buy isn't costing what it used to. Uh, a lot of people have uh, enacted price increases, and it's probably a little shy of where it should be, but I'm comfortable asking for it because I know it'll probably get, uh, get consumed through our operations. The civil defense, no change there. The radio system is something that we'll get to with capital, but uh, since our assessments for the radio system have not come in from the county yet, I took my best guess at what the assessment would grow to, given what we've been hearing about for maintenance costs and what they're hedging towards to build a little bit of a fund towards the ultimate uh, replacement of the radio system. And uh, something went wrong with my formula there, but... Um, Roughly a 27% increase in, a, uh, in an increase there. Um, and <laughs> now that is like, ooh. Why not? <laughs> by 10,000 yeah. instead of 100. Yep. <laughs> um, or did you mean to actually increase the budget to $65,000? Uh, <laughs> yep. No, no. That's, mm -hmm. With any luck, that won't be necessary. Um, but what this does is this is the money that we contribute towards the pot for the county radio system. And what we've got is a very old radio system that is requiring more and more attention, more and more parts. And uh, it's sort of a balance between parts and the repair people that are making the parts work. So the, the COG has done a nice job of putting together a team to work on it. We've got a full-time personnel that's devoted to radios and that's working out well. Um, in terms of cost, that body hasn't really added much from what we've been able to tell, but it's all hardware yep. and parts and time to find parts. Um, and the other thing is we don't have much of a choice um, in terms of whether we pay it or not. So it's just me sort of giving everybody a fair warning of what, what could be coming down the pike. And I should get that. They usually send those assessments out end of February. Yeah, their budgets are this past well this month really it's a budget hearings by program mm. yeah and this is set against the backdrop of a wholesale change in radio technology that's an understatement correct yeah yep absolutely so okay. questions or any more explanation we've talked about the radios on other occasions so yeah. well that's coming yes okay Capital piece, Chief. What is this town, town park land? <laughs> the town park is the uh, the funds that are appropriated 
so to maintain the uh, town park on Park Road. Okay. Years past, we haven't used a lot of the money. There's still one or two trees that I want to take down sure. this year. It just got to be a problem. And uh, we typically get a pretty good rate because I tell the contractors that are bidding it, you have from now till here till now, fit it in. Right. And uh, we get some pretty good figures. Mm. Also looking at potentially planting one or two trees up there this year. Maybe something flowering, another right. maple or two. Mm. Um, the one maple we were trying to nurse along uh, deer food last year. So we'll have to uh, reevaluate that. Okay, Captain. Okay. Well, since we we're talking about the radios, we'll start there. Um, what I did is I put through a request for um, a substantial amount of money. But this is not an expenditure that I would expect to be coming in the um, in the next year, but likely within the next two to three years. And the backdrop of this is. The county is likely going to piggyback on the state's digital uh, radio trunk. And while the state, at this point in the, uh, the conversations, says that they're going to handle the, the build out proper, the towers, placement of the towers, and so forth, because that's also going to help the state police and the other agencies that use the radio system, um, the towns would be provided with mobile radios. I'm sorry, portable radios, the walkie-talkie sized radios that we all use, uh, which is a big help. However, the mobile radios, the ones that are hardwired into the trucks and into police cruisers and so forth, have not been discussed. Neither have been the fire pagers. So the $100,000 is a good spitball assessment at what the police chief and I thought that we would need to re-outfit all of our vehicles. And base radios in the, uh, in the stations and so forth. Um, it could be a pricey situation, not just to buy the radios, but also to have them installed. Right. So. Um, no. Do we have a timeline as to when the, the state is uh, either gonna require or make this move? Not yet. Okay. The they said they are Scott. They haven't. They haven't. Uh, they haven't announced the schedule yet, but they've committed to doing it. They, and they prioritize Franklin County. Right. They have. Huh? Uh -huh. They have. We. They, yeah, they have. Yeah, yeah, we're. For better, or for worse, we are the most challenging radio county that's in the state for a lot of reasons. But you know, it's a. It's a it's, it, it truly is a catch-22. Most, most communities outside of Franklin County have to pay for dispatch. We don't pay for dispatch because we, we are somehow this, we're with the state police and they have continued, they're, they're going to, from what I heard, they're going to abide by that agreement that, so they're going to continue to provide the dispatch service. Um, radios, um, you know, 40 years ago, when my dad was on the fire department as a volunteer, <coughs> team, um, the, the, the whistle in the center of town went off and they, the guys would get together and they would meet the fire truck at the thing and but they went in their work clothes and they didn't, I don't think they had turn, I'm sure they did not have turnout, maybe they had turnout gear on the trucks, but they didn't have it. I mean, there wasn't a lot of stuff. So when you look at what you did 40 years ago to compare to what you do today is, and you really didn't have radios, but I would say um, who would want to go into a burning building if you didn't have radio communication, if you didn't have turnout gear, if you didn't have air packs? Um, so there, there is a cost to doing business, and sometimes you have to, and you have to, 
you know, you may not want to pay for things, but I guess, I mean, you know, there's only so many people that have volunteer for the fire department. It's not like you're turning away people, I don't think, unless I'm missing something. Generally not, um, unless it's and, a bad and, fit. And really, you don't get a choice on your radios because you're not installing the system that runs it. So, you you have to go you have to go with the ball ball you know the ball game that's making the rules. We make it a choice between two two brands. Ooh. Yeah. But yeah, you don't really get to shop around much, um, and you sort of have to fit what everybody else is doing. It's sort of a Where's Waldo scenario. Can't buy them on Amazon. Well, no. It's some, someday. Wouldn't recommend yeah. it. Although that's where they are buying parts for the current radio system. Because they can't find them anywhere, anywhere else. No, because I'm sure your, yours, yours, are, yours are analog. I'm sure yours are analog radios. Mm -hmm. And you got a 400, you're probably on your four, 400 megahertz. So, I mean, it is what that is. Right. And this new system's going to 800. So, yeah, it, it's a you, they're not interchangeable. Um, they're digital, and I mean, there is expense to that. Well, there is, and there's really no turning back either because nobody is staying with analog. The digital technology is getting to the point where it it sort of fills in all those gaps where the analog was nice, and it fits in everything but the price point, quite frankly, and the. Um, the, that figure isn't, I don't have a quote to back it up. I don't have a, um, a timeline, as I said before, when we're going to need it. But So how many, trucks would you be, how many trucks would you be looking at putting radios in? Well, the three fire engines, the brush truck, the boat. The boat has a radio. Utility vehicle, the Humvee. So there's six along with the base radio. Yeah, you're probably looking at, at $10,000 a pop. It's kind of what we based and the it police. on. And the police. And of course, you know, we, we could also phase it in. Um, we're going to need to have radios on the trucks, the boat. It's coming very handy. But if push comes to shove, we could probably wait a year on that. On the boat. You, you can run you can run a you can run a you can run a truck parallel to the river or cranberry so they could do handhelds off the boat. We could figure it out. Yeah. It's not, not a long-term solution I'd like to live with, but yeah. we can be reasonable about how we're deploying everything. Uh, and the challenge is it, it's going to happen that the state has moved in fits and starts with their announcement and their, um, uh, their adoption of this. But what ultimately will happen is they will say, okay, we're going to start next month hanging the new uh, antennas on the towers. Your trunk is going to be open on this day, your portable radios will show up and you're expected to participate because your old radios won't work anymore. And that's what we're going to run into. Um, expectation is we'd have six months or a year before that happened, but six months or a year may be all we have. That's a heck of a lot of money to cough up in short order. Excuse me, that point, please. Yeah. Um, with the Operating FERCOG radio system line item be reduced significantly because it's a great question and nobody's really talked about that uh, because the state would be running the radio system, but there's no real comment now about what any assessments might be from the state for that. Not going to change. At, at, at face value, I would expect some of that money to be spoken for somehow through the, um, uh, through the program, you know, realistically. Yep. I'm sure there'll be something. Well, that's the easy one. <laughs> Where do you want to go next? <laughs> you talk about <laughs> SCBAs? Sure. The, uh, the SCBA situation is a unique one. And Essentially what I'm talking about are the air packs that we wear. There are several parts that go to it, just to give everybody some flavor. There's the packs themselves that regulate how much air comes out, the tanks that hold the air, and a face piece that each firefighter wears. And they're 
got various sizes, it's going to be fit tested and so forth. So those have, uh, they each have a definite time uh, where they've got a service life. The tanks have a 15 year service life. Their carbon fiber, they've got to be pressure tested every three years. And after 15 years, they're no good. You can't use them anymore. I guess the theory is that um, they will uh, sustain abuse and so forth and it's just, you know, they're a perishable tool. Uh, the packs themselves and the regulators don't have a defined service life per se, but they do have a planned obsolescence in the way that the National Fire Protection Association changes standards in terms of how much oxygen comes out, how much oxygen you have in reserve before your alarm comes off, different features, benefits, little things. Those standards change every three years, five years, just to give us some flavor on that. After a certain amount of time, the manufacturers no longer make parts, support packs, and so forth. Uh, the packs also annually must be flow tested. So the vendor comes in, make sure that the air is coming out, make sure that there's no malfunctions, so on and so forth. Every pack gets a tag, and essentially it means it's had its annual checkup, it's in good working order, there's no further need to, um, to maintain it, test it, it happens every year. When packs don't pass, they get fixed, and when the parts are no longer available to fix them, then they disappear. Um, so we bought our packs um, about 17 years ago, and we are now in line for an entire new uh, array of tanks. And you have one tank and one spare because nobody wants to wait for their tank to get filled up while the building's burning down, swap them out on the scene. And so I'm faced with either purchasing new tanks at about $1,000 a piece, I need 30 of them, to roughly, to replace what I have. And then there's a real prospect that the packs may only have a two to three to four year life beyond that. The new packs that we might buy won't work with the old tanks, and the old tanks won't work with the new packs. So a couple of years ago, we dipped our toe in the water, started looking at different technologies, started having the, the, the guys that wear them and the gals that wear them try them on, look at features, uh, narrowed ourselves down to two. Um, I'm in the process now of getting best and final figures from both because we've got a couple of different funding options. The money that I'm asking the town for is only a part of what we would be spending on these the entire expenditure is about $120,000. So I've asked the town for 40. Um, my budget, I can carve out, <coughs> less, uh, I can carve out roughly 15,000 between this fiscal year and next fiscal year. Um, the Firemen's Association is willing to step up for a figure and we've got a business in town that's willing to donate a, a sizable sum of money. Um, they're not able to donate everything, but um, they're probably gonna help us round things out. So with the money that I've asked you for, I should be able to accomplish the project with new packs, new tanks, new masks, and they would have a foreseeable service life of 15 years maybe 20 if the technology doesn't change an awful lot. Uh, but they're essentially comparable in terms of their performance and what they do. Um, it's just... So this is a wholesale change of the entire inventory. And if I'm not able to do the entire inventory, the way we group them is by truck. <coughs> by the NFPA standards, every seated position in the truck needs to have an air pack available for it. So if I can only do the two frontline trucks, that would be 12 packs. Then engine four, the small truck that has two packs in it, might wait till another time. It begs the question, why not phase it in over a, a, a two or a three year period? Because we'd be doing this again in 15 years and the price is only gonna be more expensive. Absolutely. The challenge is the packs that we have now have 30 minute bottles and the low air alarm goes off when you've got a third of a tank left. The packs that you buy now can have a 30 minute bottle, 
but you've got to have your lower alarm go off when half the tank is loud, not a third of the tank. So what you can get into is a situation where you've got four people on an entry crew, two of them have old packs, two of them have new packs, <coughs> somebody's got 10 minutes inside, somebody's got five minutes inside. Now granted that happens anyway to some extent, the way people use oxygen and the way they breathe, but it's challenging to bake that in at the outset. And it's one of those things where very, it's for a small department, it's very common just to get them all at once. And then you know everybody's got the same equipment, the parts are interchangeable, the folks coming in to do the, uh, to do the service know they've just got to work on one type of pack and you can go that way. We'll phase it in over a year or two if we have to, but that's not our preferred way of, you know, of tackling the uh, situation. So total number of units is 40, Chief? No, total number of units is 15. So 15 with 40 bottles. 15 with 30 bottles. 30 bottles, all right, packs, yeah. yeah. And that's actually less than what we have now. Uh -huh. And what happens to the old equipment? Hmm. The old equipment, we can again try to surplus it. Mm -hmm. There are departments that will purchase it. Um, Again, they're typically not the departments that could afford to purchase new equipment to start with of any, of any sort. Right. There is a, there is a second-hand market. There's no trade-in value, per se. Sure. Uh, but we could either try to sell them on eBay, uh, Craigslist. There's, a, you know, there's some dealers some that might market. take them. Um, they're not dealers of new equipment, but they might take them in trade. Um, maybe we'd get $1,000 a piece from them. I know that's a lot of money, but I haven't really inquired sure. because I didn't want to spend that time um, you know, and, and get people interested and so forth before we actually had something to, to go on. It seems to be a purchase like this, if it's a wholesale change, then part of, part of the arrangement should be the disposition of the old asset. Mm -hmm. So we just don't have them sitting around. If, if people buy them, we'll sell them. Right. But we've still got some of the old packs hanging around that- well, I go back to, you know, that problem too. But, well, and the thing with that is nobody buy them right. back then. You know, so how do we dispose of them? Declare right. them if surplus you're... and try to sell them on eBay. You know, collector's item, what have you. Uh, the challenge is that they, you know, there's a, uh, there's a defined um, service expectation. Nobody that's got, you know, any, any sort of an OSHA oversight or um, any oversight like that is necessarily going to buy them for their business or right. that sort of thing. Right, right. But warehousing them is not the best option. No, it's not. Simple. No, it's not. They'd go. Yeah. Um, but we can't expect to offset the cost very much. No, no, no. I was thinking about what's in the trailer. Oh, that's 200 desks from the school we built a long time ago that still has 200 desks in it. Well, why? We don't use them anymore. <laughs> okay. Why are they there? I'm, I'm, yep. Anyway, you know. Yep, it's nice to keep one for posterity, hang it on the wall, think of what used to be. <laughs> right. But aside from that, you know, it, they take up a lot of space. Chief, I have a question for you. Sure. Does the frequency of use of these air packs or any, any of these equipment affect their, their lifespan? To some degree, but not an awful lot. The, the, the wear and the tear is typically on a lot of the moving parts, the valves and the check valves and so forth. And those are pretty easy to replace. So they, it's sort of like, you know, it's a lot like an automobile where you've got brakes, you've got tires, you've got some things that you know over the life of the, the asset are going to have to get replaced. Um, so it's not like we would necessarily go through packs any faster than Greenfield or Northampton or vice versa uh, because either they don't get used or they get used an awful lot. The, uh, the timing for the replacement really does have to do with how those standards change and when the, uh, when the tanks can be no longer used, the cylinders. Is any of the safer grant eligible? No. No. We would, we would typically not be eligible until our equipment was woefully out of date. Because we tried um, a couple years ago to get grants, we actually invested in a professional grant writer to help us get a grant for PACS, mm -hmm. um, a cascade system that fills the tanks in the fire station. We have one of those. And we were, you know, the, the, 
the grant writer kind of laughed at us and said, I'll take your money if you want, but you don't really have a, a shot. We thought we had a shot because we've got the training trailers out back, and it's a county asset, and a lot of people use it, but that wasn't even, we weren't even close. FEMA didn't even review it. Okay. What else on the, I see uh, HVAC and ADA. Yes. Uh, so we, we haven't hit 200 yet, but we're working on it. I can, mm. I can make some changes if you do. <laughs> no. um, for the ADA, that's a, a compilation of a lot of things. Taking from, excuse me, uh, the building's assessment that was done, yep. looking at adding in uh, an ADA sink in the, in the um, kitchen, and the associate cabinet work and, and plumbing in that. Is the ADA accessible door? Is it, is it wide enough? That, I so believe. It's a 36 inch door, why would you bother? Uh, I don't know. Just, just it's, saying. It's, it's a great question, but right. to the best of my knowledge, I don't think. 42 inch for ADA, not 36. 42 inch door plus closures plus right. plus. Yeah, I don't the sink think could un, the sink could unwind a thread in the sweater and leaving the train station. <laughs> <laughs> it could, but um, and I might be on me. I don't recall him mentioning that the doorways were of a sufficient or insufficient width yep. in the in the report. Just curious. Anyway, um, but. That was listed, right? So it's in there, and it's a relatively inexpensive right. uh, project. And it does show progress, and I appreciate that as far as uh, as far as the uh, ADA survey goes. Sure. Um, the the other items. Um, there was a comment about the wall between the truck bay and the uh, attic over the office uh, not being anchored properly, and. Mm -hmm. I guess it's anchored into the, the block wall below, but it wasn't, it's unknown if it was anchored properly into the, the steel structure above. Okay. So the uh, comment was, if there was an earthquake, it could fall down. Well, true, it's up in my house. Yeah. Understood. Um, I think if we get an earthquake of that size, we'll have a lot of other problems in there. <clears throat> That's true. That's true. Yeah. But. Um, I was going to use George's lift to pull the wall up. To do that. Um, a couple of hundred bucks to have an engineer come in, look at that, Makes sense. give us the, the either the A-OK -okay or it's not OK. But um, we'll see that the, the structural drawings have nothing yeah. in there. It's just one of those things where the two lines don't meet. The block wall that runs all the way up. Yeah. yeah. And the contractors kind of had to fill in the blanks. Sure. Um, other things, minor painting yeah. of the, the bottom of the door frames going to paint the whole door frame because it'll look silly to just paint the bottom of the door frames. Um, ceiling, uh, adding some new urethane sealant between the, the building and the concrete apron. There's a gap in the old sealant's shrunk and no more plasticizers than that. Uh, putting in a little bit of blacktop uh, between the blacktop apron and the concrete apron. There's a mm -hmm. gap of about two or three inches. And I'm not sure what shrank or what slid. Yeah, I think the blacktop may have shrunk slightly, uh, or it's sliding down the hill towards the sewer plant. Uh, that's probably there. You go. That could be too. Yeah. But this, we'll, this is all captured in the 14 for the ADA under your note here, ADA. Yes. Okay. Yep. So you got a punch list of building items. They add up to 14. They add up to 14. Parts, expected fees, professional yeah. services. Um, a lot of this stuff. The firefighters can do, sure. you know, we can do a drill night and we can do some painting, we can do some different things. So it adds up. It's still gonna add materials though, right? That makes perfect yeah, sense. Yeah, you know, blacktop, how much a ton for blacktop, you know, quick assessment, a few tons of blacktop. And um, you know, perishable things, primers, rags, brushes, all that stuff. And then the HVAC, is this the uh, automation upgrade that was sent forward here as part of the Green communities bit? Uh, kind of. Um, it's the document that I included yeah. with, the, um, uh, with the capital request. But this is something that was discovered by the contractor after the work was done. Um, once we cut ties with Siemens, we noticed that the building was even less uh, comfortable and responsive to changes in computer input than before. And coincidentally, we're having the green communities work done at that time. Gentleman that was helping with some of the variable drive uh, 
work, said he had a guy that worked for him that used to work for Siemens that was good with programming, uh, met the gentleman, went through, um, he identified some things as potentially being flaws in the Siemens design, not only in terms of hardware, but the way the software controls the system. Um, some fallacies in terms of what the, uh, the makeup error is, the temperature of that makeup error, how much of it, uh, so on and so forth. So my desire was to completely lobotomize the system, go back to having thermostats that could be programmed, and have something that was kind of simple. Um, the HVAC system we have in the building is more suitable to a hospital or university building versus a building of our size. Uh, but to remove everything, replace it with those controls would be very expensive. And after a little bit of soul searching and getting a quote from this company, seems like this is our best chance to have the existing system work well. They're gonna add one additional piece of electronics, which I originally pushed back against. They said it wouldn't work without it. Um, could certainly get a second and a third opinion, but quite frankly, I wanted to see what the appetite was for spending that kind of money, because clearly we're gonna need something to be done um, the way that the system runs now, we've burned a lot of oil, and it hasn't been horrendously cold this year. The, the system wants to keep the building at 80 degrees, and um, we've been able to knock that back with the help of this vendor, but um, it So uh, you it can't go on, and just back. not to go too deep in the weed, you can't just go on and change set point per room? Changes it right back. There's a redundancy to the set point Good. where it... Uh, I still don't ask me about that building. I, if I would, if I if I would do it over again, there's a couple things I would have done differently. Okay, like just one, a couple. <laughs> well, yeah, hire a different architect. Yeah. Okay. One of the two. Second, hire a different, different contractor. contractor. <laughs> Three, put the right people in charge of the building when it's yeah. being built. Four, no, <laughs> not that I thought about this, but that that building to me is the most troublesome building that we have and and for what it does it's it's a garage with a couple offices really think about it let's let's be serious it's a garage should we i mean should we have any problems with that yeah no no way we can hold them accountable uh, they're gone oh geez elliot i wish you don't there's not enough lawyers in the world there then then we talk. We can talk about statute of repose and, yeah. and 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 you know and you know the thing is is that when you go back and look at it, this architect has had the building designer had probably did a building in Buckland they had problems with they did right. building in Princeton they had a pro, they had they had bu building Belcher in Belcher Town. Town they had the same it, it is over and over and over and over again. There's no. Uh, there's no. There's no like clauses somewhere in the state law for forming a posse, and <laughs> so um, I like the idea. Yeah. Circling back St to this. Elliot, when, you know when our school roof fell down, I called the architect, <laughs> and you know what the architects told me? And I, I am so serious. I'll be so. I'm, I and this still bothers me. It's 20 years ago, mm -hmm. almost. A school building. And and, and, you, and you know and you know what he told me? And I and I, and I explained to him, Mr. Flansburg. It's amazing. I remember the man's name sure. over the seat a long time. Your your the, our new school that you designed. The roof fell down. Well, Mr. Fighting Kevitz, we won many awards for that building. <laughs> but sir, the roof the roof <laughs> fell just the roof just fell down. But we won many awards for that. And and I, I'm sitting there and I'm going. It has a turret. <laughs> And, and we yep. missed it, and we missed yep. it by set, and we missed a statute of repose like by six months, right. Right. and we went to testify in in the great general court of the state of Massachusetts, and and we were told, you know, if you were the big dig, we'll let the big dig, you know, do away with the statute of repose, but not for you guys. Right. And we lost because of Mr. the contractor that built it was a next door neighbor of a state senator that was a very, and they had, they both had a, a lake house and 
Save Lake. You want me to tell you more about this, <laughs> Elliot? It, it's a deep, dark, winding road. Yeah, he's getting wind up. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll stop by sometime. Oh, can, can I, a, I, the one thing I ever, thing. the one thing I, I, in about how our government never worked for us. I remember because my kids had to go to uh, Wheatley for school. Uh, for this, and, uh, and, and if it wasn't for Wheatley, I thank yeah. Wheatley every day yeah. because they, they stood up. Yeah. And then oh, when we I rebuilt the school, when we rebuilt the school, Francis, there, I will say we had the inspector general, the attorney general, right. Steve Kulik, and, and Stan Rosenberg. And at the time, the, the governor, yeah. they, they worked with us. Our legislature, beside that, the SBA, <laughs> the SBA as well, the S and the SBA yeah. as well. But <clears throat> so, with respect to the building Sorry. system, the BMS system, Steve, that the platform we still digress. exists in lots of places. It's right. still a robust platform. It's a deep pool. Unless there's something catastrophic, uh, it would be interesting to see if, how uh, a, a, a a programmer with a skill set could get in there and fix it because it worked for a long time. They don't just go it, wonky. It, it, it worked. It's always been touchy. Yep. And every time, this, there is something to the set point issue because every time the seasons would change. Sure. We would have to be on the phone with Siemens for at least a week sure. and have them do something. It has to do with makeup air primarily. Right, yep. and the temperature of the makeup air. It thinks the makeup air is 60 degrees right. on the 1st of January at yeah. 4 in the morning. So um, what I am going to do is continue to get people to look at it, but very few people want to look at it. Sure. As soon as they hear it's a semen system, oh, well, they, they don't want to sure. deal. This company was the first one that would come in. Is that CTC? I uh, believe so. Yeah. And with their level of knowledge, they were able to make a short-term fix, sure. but it started to climb again in the last week or two. Um, the um, the piece that they're adding in, I'm no expert. It was explained to me as a bridge mm -hmm. between essentially the hardware sensors yep. and yep. the software. Yep. Yeah. And can you go talk to him? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, easy. They're doing the same thing at Frontier right now, so okay. it's not that big a deal. Um, I'm willing to listen to sure. anybody that might have a silver bullet for it. Yep. So you want a, you want a system that's robust and repeatable. That's what you want, and that's easy. And it may take well, 15 grand, and it's fine, but you want to have a it's solution. It's balanced in the system. There's that, so it never really was. It was never balanced. We changed the chilling plant. We reduced the duct. We, it, it went from 15 C, tons to 7. Well, this is one more. of those examples where bigger is not always better. Well, anyway. It, it was designed to air condition the truck bay, Correct. Uh, which wasn't what we were going for. Right. Then you have it both on the heat side as well as the cooling side. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Yeah. It's a complicated building. Oh, if it weren't, it's yeah. a garage. I know, it's a garage. Exactly right. Okay, anything else, Chief? Um, nothing that I have for you this evening. Nothing additional. So we declare, we declare the hoses surplus. <laughs> yes. You're going to get me wound up about the building now. Uh, I was thinking, I, uh, the only thing it doesn't have is Kevlar strips in the... Uh, the sidewalls. Right. Almost. We almost had that, but that, that we cut that out. Yeah. It's a nice to have. Yeah. Sure they are. How can you not have Kevlar in your sidewalls? <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. So the operating piece of the cliff notes, no additional um, humans. Right. More hours based on history. That makes sense. Call hours. Well, more, more pay to cover the hours. Yeah. yeah. Call hours. Yeah. Right. Yep. We're, just, we're just being honest about paying yep. for the sure. call hours. And then uh, the radios are a swag only in that we don't know the purchase price is complete yet or the timeline, but this is the FYI, it's coming. It's coming. Great. SCBAs, we're going to split and share. Uh, it's a wholesale change, and we're going to find a way to dispose of the re remaining existing equipment after the installation, purchase, and testing. Uh, and the HVAC system is still a mess from 20 years ago. Perfect. It's an enlightening night. That, that, that covers it. <coughs> Questions of the Finance Committee? Good thing we Not about the oh, building. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Good thing we had muffins. Yeah, I right. mean. <laughs> I'll be happy to give anybody a tour of the public safety complex. <laughs>
<laughs> Should I bring a jacket? Oh my gosh. It depends. It wouldn't hurt if you had any shorts and a t-shirt. Yeah. Right? I'd have to wear it. But. Dress in layers that are easily <laughs> removable. A layer up, layer down. <laughs> Very good, Chief. Thanks so much for all the work. As well as, uh, all this oh, work. how's our new fire truck, Chief? Yeah. The fire truck is very close. Good. Still in Connecticut? It's in Connecticut. Did, okay. did, did the police department get their new cruiser? The race is we on. Have, we, have little, we have little wagers going on who's going to get the, the vehicle first. Really? Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Well, we have, we have very little confidence in either one. But. <laughs> Will it be available by Memorial Day? I would expect so. Well, that's, uh, that's what's important. Uh, that's right. what's important. We're all said and done. Roll it down the street. Yep. You know, since, since we're all here, the truck has, uh, we put it through its paces at the plant. It is what we spec'd. They built a nice truck. Uh, works very well, laid out very well. Got some last minute uh, changes that we had. Handle here, step there, little things. And now we're just closing out a contract. Everything that we're entitled to. And They'll get everything they're entitled to. And once we all know what that list is, the truck where, will be here. Where was the truck built again? South Dakota. And it's in Connecticut now? Yeah. The manufacturing plant was in Lyons, and the dealer is in Connecticut. Ah, the dealer. Yep. I forget about those guys. There's always a layer there. Yep. Yep. Always a layer. The yeah. dealer. So the dealer is taking uh, all the last minute details. Into the undercoating and the tinted windows. <laughs> Uh, Auto fill tires, right. right? Galvanized. <laughs> the windows were tinted. That was meant for Tom, because I know. <laughs> I, you, you, you know, I, I I feel so I sometimes I feel so bad for for small towns. We we, you know, our 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 people try so hard, but you you are dealing against big business, and big business thinks that. You know, here's little Sunderland, and they got, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Like Sunderland, Conway, Shelburne, and and you know what? And and we're all a bunch of hayseeds, and we don't know anything. And then then we have to sit down. You have to have the conversations, and well, maybe they're not as much hayseedy as we thought. And it's, I I just don't know where we lost the thing about good business. You know, just. You have a contract, you supply what's in the contract, I pay what the contract says, and we all shake hands and we, we move on. Did you get a hat? Did you at least get a hat? No. They, they <laughs> say they built in some hats, some, some stuff, but you know. The last truck you got, you guys came back from the, this, the site visit with hats. Ultimately, it's called swag. Yeah, swag, exactly. Right. Swag. I wasn't going to say fleece vest or anything like that, just hats. <laughs> Less than $50. Well, I don't know. The hat probably was $75, $80. I don't know. <laughs> Air Force. Kevlar hats. reinforced, right? <laughs> Kevlar hats. No, but that's, that's true. So we're working it out. South it's, Dakota it's in contract. Scott. It's in Mi contract. Probably missile ears hats or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. We've got, we've, we have the funds. Great. We're just waiting for what we deserve. And, Perfect. Uh, Collected interest on it, Scott. Yeah. Can't go wrong. No. no. All right. And it'll be beautiful and, and all ours when it shows up. You, you did, oh. did, Police cruiser and the fire truck are going to pull at the same time, and everything will all live happily after. after. The rainbow's going to come out. The rainbow's going to come out. Exactly. And they'll have spelled Sunderland wrong, like Dunderland <laughs> or something. Like that. No, Jeez, they already that. did that. They, they, they already did that. Uh, it's do it been again. Fixed. Yes, that was the number, right? It was yeah. S U M D E R. Yeah. So was an M. Sunderland. We showed, Sunderland. We showed up. We showed up at the plant, and they had it in the showroom with the glass-fronted windows. And we we got out of the car. I looked at it. I said, <coughs> lettered it wrong. The guy said, you're kidding me. We haven't even looked at it yet. I said, I can see it. It's engine two, not engine three. Yeah. So he said, okay. Pulled out his notepad. So that, that was number one. Item number one. That was number one. Nice. Then we ordered red number six, and it was red number four. Uh-oh. A little light. All good. It'll be all good. Scott. We'll get there. Yeah, we will. Anything That's else, again. Chief? Well, Any no. fire safety? I will. Nothing as far as the budget goes, yeah. but we're we're right into uh, right into brush burning season. Yep. Yeah. So. Oh yeah. Bur right. Burn early. The nice. closer to closer to wet weather you get, the better off. Good. Use, use the online. Tell my wife. Permit tool. Permit. Yep. And can we burn on Sundays now? No. Damn it. No. <laughs> I think we're the only Franklin County town that can. Law? There's like two towns, I think. Sunderland and one other. They can't burn on Sunday. That's exactly right. It's a day of rest. 
to and take a rest. The, nice. uh, the other thing, check your um, check your smoke detectors, not just for batteries, but check smoke detectors and CO, see when they were made. Eight. Yep. Because we're having a rash of calls for smoke detectors that are giving their end of life chirp. Mm -hmm. 10 years. And no matter what kind of brand new battery you put in, it's still gonna still do it. Yeah. So good rule of thumb, 10 years for smokes and older COs could be as little as five years. Five and the to seven. dual ones are expensive, aren't they? Like 40, 50 they years. are. They are. Um, now they're required to talk to you. And uh, so they give you a dissertation of what's going on yeah. and you, you have just enough time to get out. You can't choose the voice, that's the problem. Right. No. And um, also be aware that there have been a rash of fake counterfeit smoke detectors for sale on Amazon. There is a list three pages long Great. of detectors that have not been mm -hmm. tested by UL, the NFPA, there's no guarantee that they do anything other than sit on the ceiling for it. So do your Just homework. Go buy one locally. Buy one locally, get the sealed batteries, right. especially if you're gonna be selling your house soon. Right. Better operated smokes don't necessarily pass for a sale uh, inspection. So, cool. good to know. All right, thanks, Steve. Thank Appreciate you for your support. Thanks. 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 thanks Steve. Next up, we've got minutes of February 3rd. Finance Rolfing. committee questions? We've we'll adjourned. Great, thanks so much. Minutes of February 3rd. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Uh, second. Uh, all those in favor? Second Aye. minutes? Aye. Three to zero, please. Next up, we have. Town administrator updates because I don't. I, I'm going to skip select again. I'll send Spotlight I'll Jeff. Send my notes again. Uh, Oz, you're going to have to get something called the Jeff Corner. Okay. No. No. I. Have do you want to hear hear about How's my week? What's going on next week? What just what's general updates? Uh, you can come in the office that we should be running away scared of. Yeah, cool. Things that are fun and interesting okay. you're working on, or not much. No, I, I went to the CPC meeting last week yeah. and heard about the proposals for CPA funding. Oh, good. It's really and, pushing for that um, Learned about those. They were very interesting. Uh, there were six of them, uh, two dealing with Riverside Park um, and, and kayaks and Oh, the kayak seating. shed. Yeah. 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 Um, Storage. The watershed protection oh, yeah. one um oh, off the top. oh a pollinator garden mm -hmm. and i think i'm missing a couple others but did we tell him he has to make cookies for the town meeting yet no. yeah okay it's okay Make? <laughs> I think you want that. Yeah. Don't forget, I was the marijuana czar in the last town I was in, so yeah. it might be an interesting uh, town meeting. Oh, in town go. meeting. Special brownies for town meeting. Um, How was uh, you were meeting people, both uh, residents as well as uh, staff and boards? Coming along? Yes. Good. Yep, coming along well. Um, I think I've met most of staff. I, I've reached out to um, the superintendent mm -hmm. and the principal of the elementary school and hopefully meeting with them soon. Cool. Um, as far as department heads, I think I've met all of them individually. Um, staff in town hall, I think I've met everybody. Um, I was sworn in as the assistant town clerk. Nice. So, oh, you don't uh, want to screw that job up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the most, the most important you one. don't want to screw that job up. Um, Tom Clark will get you in jail. No, get us in jail. Too. Well, that's the point. <laughs> exactly. Um, so yes, there's that, and then I think that there was. Uh, I'm going to be the assistant treasurer as well. Mm -hmm. yep. um, coming up. So we talked downstairs earlier in the week, earlier sorry, late last week about procurement path through classes. Those yes. are coming up this quarter? Yes. Um, March, I want to say 19th, 20th, and 21st right. um, is the first class. Um, and then I've also gotten into the fall finance seminar from MMA and Suffolk. Right. So that's on five Fridays beginning November 6th. Good. Um, so it doesn't doesn't help for this budget round, but yeah, but you can you can read uh, you can use uh, Sunderland as the example case study of all the things that are uh, wished to be done that last year. No, 
It's going to be just fine. <laughs> it's going to be a review. That's exactly right. What we did. Um, DPU approved the energy aggregation. Oh, nice. Um, for yeah, I saw that. Yeah. So. Uh, just to get more info coming. Yes, in, right? I think it's Colonial Power is mm -hmm. sort of the aggregating company, and they were looking yeah. through the order, and they were going to get back to seven towns, I believe. Yeah. Um, year <laughs> one and figure out what next steps are. There's a energy committee meeting tomorrow that I'm planning on going to. Oh, good. Also going to try to swing by the council of aging. They overlap a little bit, okay. so not sure how that's going to work, but going to try and hit both. Um, and then we got a nice little certificate for the latest complete streets grant nice. that, that my predecessor. Nice. Got, so I won't take any credit other than we got a nice you to administer it. Yes. Right? <laughs> you get to do the heavy lifting. The application was approved. This is South Main nice. Street sidewalk, some bike uh, enhancements on River, I'm sorry, Falls Road, and then South Silver Lane Silver sidewalk. Lane. I'm sorry, yeah. Silver Lane stand, uh, sidewalk on the and bike track. So it should be good. Yeah. yeah. Continuing to expand that complete street program. Um, and then uh, next Friday, I'm doing my orientation with the Franklin Regional Count. Burkhoff. Yes. Thank you. Good. Up, up there? Yes. In Greenfield. Yeah, in Greenfield. Well, that'll be yeah. good. Uh, in, to introduce, uh, get that FaceTime, understand the breadth of offerings they have, and, you know, excellent. Yeah. Uh, board updates. Uh, personnel committee meeting Wednesday night. Nice. Nope, Thursday night. Thursday night. 13th. Yep. Continuing our work that we've been doing and still waiting to hear some official word on the Union 38 piece, mm -hmm. but so. No release yet. Tom? Yeah. Um, South, South County um, Senior Center, we had a meeting, voted on the budget that's We'll put it through um, trying to convince the uh, the, the that we need to offer programs so and and it's good to mix things up and you know to try to find the right and we now have in Sundown a council of aging and we talked the other day I talked with uh, there at the, the meeting. We talked afterwards a little bit, and and now they're gonna kind of start setting priorities for where Sentinel's Council of Aging wants to go. So it's good. It's good. Really good. It's a good fit too between yeah. the COA as well as the South County Senior Center. Um, sort of. Well, again, we talked about. There's South County Senior Center as an entity, and the Council of Aging is a separate entity, and and they don't. Well, they both can do with our look at seniors. The Council of Aging also has a um, much broader um, look. They, you know, you're looking at housing and elder care and. There's a lot of other stuff. It's right. it's more than just the operation of the senior center. Right, right. Senior center is one portion of it. Yeah, their charge is much broader. It, it's yeah. a it's a much broader yeah. and 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 that's and I said with you know Sundown has very fortunate that we are progressing with our senior housing, um, but with senior housing, it, it again there's other things. There's senior care, like I said. There's senior housing. There's um, a lot of things that keep uh, the seniors aware of. So we got stuff to do. Good. So uh, last week there were two meetings at Frontier Capital Working Group. One was a design, one was a review in uh, projects for the year. Another was a designer uh, interview for the track project. And uh, those two meetings went well. Uh, the uh, discussion around the designers sent out to Frontier's attorneys, and uh, they're getting back to the work, getting back to the administration about that. Three solid, three solid designers. That was a good thing. Tomorrow night, there's a Sunderland Capital Planning Committee meeting downstairs. Begin to get work through some of these 
uh, budget components, budget request components, and uh, that's that. Oz, anything from you? No. Nice. Okay. Um, appoint Megan Arquin to the Recreation Committee for the current appointment cycle. Motion. Second. There's a motion made and seconded, and thank you, Megan, for yes. volunteering, wanting to be on this on the committee. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. And lastly, um, property insurance renewal for 120 North Main. Again, we don't we haven't transferred the property to RDI. Right. There's a rider that we've had on that the last couple of years, one year rider, and this year's rider is a replacement. And I think the value was seven hundred bucks. Seven, yep. seven, seven, eleven, thirty-six. Seven, eleven, thirty-six. Yep. So Continue. All those in favor? Aye. Motion. Aye. Second. Got to do it. Third. Three to zero, please. Got to keep it up while it's there. Okay. February seventeenth, we're closed. Uh, our next meeting is going to be the twenty-fourth. And remember, March second at six thirty in this room, in front of these cameras. Is the town caucus the town caucus the town caucus warrant is signed and posted? Uh, we we need twenty five. Uh, clerks usually pretty good about wrestling people up. If you want to come to town caucus, we do it much better than Iowa. That's all I have to say. I have two words to say: no apps. No apps. No apps <laughs> at all. All by paper. No apps. Okay. Is not anything else? Any other business? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion's made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.